I'm gonna take a sip of water real quick. <laughs> awesome, I just wanna say thank you to Pastor Woody um, for trusting me and uh, allowing me to come back and trusting me so much to um, go on vacation and leave me with this congregation. I promised him that I would um, love you all well. And so um, I'm very excited to be here and release the message that the Lord has um, put in my spirit. So I'm going to pray first. So Lord, I thank you. God, we reverence you. God, we exalt your name. And Holy Spirit, we invite you into this atmosphere. I command this atmosphere to shift in the name of Jesus. I bind every distraction right now. I bind every anxious thought. I pull it down. And right now we exalt the name of Jesus Christ above every high and lofty place right now we exalt the name of Jesus so every fear every um, timidity every anxious thought must bow to the name of Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit we ask that you would fill this place Lord God I ask that you would prepare the hearts to release this word that you would touch hot coals to my lips and that as I speak your words would come out Lord God I declare that your vessel is ready so Lord God, I ask that you would speak in and through me and that your word would cut through soul and spirit like a double-edged sword. So God, may your word go out and not return void and accomplish everything it was intended to. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Okay, so we're going to um, read quite a bit of scripture today because we, we um, worship him in spirit and in truth. So um, we are going to go to Proverbs 9. And I'm actually going to read all of Proverbs 9 and 8. But I'm going to start with Proverbs 9. Okay, just getting everything set up. All right, so um, Proverbs 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servants, and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, come, eat my food, and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways, and you will live. Walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a mocker invites insults. Whoever rebukes the wicked incurs abuse. Do not rebuke mockers or they will hate you. Rebuke the wise and they will love you. Instruct the wise and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous and they will add to their learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For, though, for through wisdom your days will be many and years will be added to your life. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are a mocker, you alone will suffer. Folly is an unruly woman. She is simple and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by, who go straight on their way. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, stolen water is sweet, food eaten in secret is delicious. But little do they know that, that the dead are there and her guests are deep in the realm of the dead. Okay, so I'm going to read um, Proverbs 8 now and then um, we'll expand upon that. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? At the highest point along the way, where the where the paths meet, she takes her stand. Beside the gate leading into the city, at the entrance she cries aloud, To you, O people, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. You who are simple, gain prudence. You who are foolish, set your hearts on it. Listen, for I have trustworthy things to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. 
My mouth speaks what is true, for my lips detest wickedness. All the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. To the discerning, all of them are right. They are upright to those who have found knowledge. Choose my instruction instead of silver. Knowledge rather than choice gold, for wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can compare with her. I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have insight. I have power. By me, kings reign and rulers issue decrees that are just. By me, princes govern and nobles who are rule on earth. I love those who love me and those who seek me find me. With me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice, bestowing a rich inheritance on those who love me and making their treasure full. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. I was formed long ages ago, at the very beginning when the world came to be, when there were no watery depths, I was given birth, when there were no springs overflowing with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth, before he made the world or its fields or any of the dust of the earth, I was, I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the foundations of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of earth, then I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. Now then, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not disregard it. Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. For those who find me find life and receive favor from the Lord. But those who fail to find me harm themselves. All who hate me love death. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, his word is so good. His word is so rich. That's really all we need is just his word. And um, I want to dig into wisdom and the call for us to gain wisdom. If you're discerning at all the times that we are in, you know that you need wisdom. You know what's to come. You know that confusion and chaos is happening. It's starting now and it's going to increase. And so what the body needs, the body of Christ, we need wisdom. And right here it tells us how to get wisdom. It says right here in Proverbs 9, 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's what the word says. And I think a lot of times we uh, might not understand what the fear of the Lord is because we mix that fear up with a fear of punishment. But this fear is not a fear of punishment because he loves us. And love, he fills us with his perfect love. Like I was here last time, we talked about how perfect love drives out all fear. We're not talking about fear of punishment. We're talking about fear as in reverence to the Lord. Lord, as in all of the Lord. When you are face to face with the Lord, that is that kind of reverence, that kind of reverence that shakes your soul, that makes you realize that, wow, the Lord's so much bigger than my problems. The Lord is so much bigger than me. That is the reverence. When, Whenever we 
focus our attention on the Lord and Him, everything else gets smaller. That's why we exalt the name of Jesus Christ, because when we exalt Him, then all of our things come down. All of our selfish, our pride, our problems, all the things get smaller and smaller and smaller, and that's when we can have wisdom. That's when we can know what to do, and that's when we can discern the times. And so um, that's what I'm here to, I believe the Lord wants to restore that fear of the Lord, that reverence and that honor to him. And so um, what I find is interesting is how wisdom and folly sound very much alike. Like if you were to read, and we just read Proverbs 9, and wisdom called out from the high place, come and eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and, and you will live. Walk in the way of insight. And what does the voice of folly say? She says, let all who are simple come to my house, to those who have no sense, she says. So they sound similar. And what's interesting is folly um, has a very seductive, seducive type of way of manipulating truth. Um, she is, and here we're just using the reference of her, but it could spirits don't have gender so so but um it's interesting because folly makes something in secret like she she says stolen water is sweet and food eaten in secret is delicious and wisdom speaks differently um so that's something to be aware of of the similarities between the two so how are we not going to get mixed up it's the fear of the lord it's the reverence of the lord and and in Proverbs 8 13 it says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil to hate pride hate arrogance hate evil behavior perverse speech that is fear of the Lord so my question is why are we entertaining these things why do we watch shows why do we listen to music why do we entertain conversations why do we entertain ourselves with prideful thoughts and arrogance and evil behavior and perverse speech it's easy to say oh yeah i hate those things but does your daily life actually reflect that you hate those things and i'm not saying hate those people but i'm saying those things of pride and evil behavior, perverse speech. Why do we continue to put ourselves in situations where we're hearing perverse speech, sexual slurs, and foul language? Why do we continue to put ourselves in these situations and to watch these shows and say, oh, it's okay? It's not okay because it says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And if you want any kind of wisdom at all, you are to reverence the Lord, respect him. I can't listen to that. I can't have you take the Lord's name in vain. I can't, I can't entertain this conversation. I can't watch this show. There are certain things that if you truly want the wisdom of the Lord, if you truly want to be able to discern the seasons and the times and to know what to do, there are certain things that you just will no longer need to participate in or entertain. Unless that is the price, <laughs> that is the price, and the price that you pay is up to you. It's up to you because what happens? I'm just gonna the the danger of not being consecrated. You're like, well, Kate, that sounds like you're being really legalistic and things like that. Well, the point is for you to be consecrated, to be set apart, to not take place in certain things because you need to hear from the Lord. He's speaking all the time. And if you're not hearing from him, it's not a God problem, it's a you problem. You gotta check your heart, you gotta check your soul. What are you intaking? Who are you around? What are you listening to? And it's going to get harder and harder. So to discern the wisdom from folly, from they're both shouting at the same time, these two similar things. You've got to be so delved, like so in the word 
word of God, so saturated in his presence. And um, that's another thing. It says, Proverbs 8.30 says here, where do you find wisdom? So, man, I don't know about you. Sometimes I'm like, I just need wisdom. What do I do with this? What do, how do I handle this conversation? How do I handle this hard person um, or relationship or whatever it is, this job situation? Or how do I know where to go and things like that? Where do you find wisdom? Proverbs 8.30. Then I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in the whole world and delighting in my, mankind. You found, you find wisdom in his presence. You find wisdom in his presence. So if you're not even giving God any time, you're, you're going to be folly. You're going to be foolish because you won't have wisdom. So you need, to, like it is, it is not, it's a mandate from heaven. You are a heavenly being. Like you are a citizen of heaven. You've got, you've got to spend, the only way that you're going to survive, the only way that you're going to survive through these times is to be, in the presence of the Lord it is that important it is that important so that's where you find wisdom that's how we get wisdom that's how we hear from the Lord and so um, I'm going to go to Isaiah 66 verses 15 through 24 And I'm going to read this. So now verse 15, Isaiah 66. See, the Lord's coming with fire, and his chariots are like a whirlwind. He has, he will bring down his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire, for the fire and with his sword. The Lord will execute judgment on all people, and many will be those slain by the Lord. Those who consecrate and purify themselves to go into the gardens, following one who is among those who eat the flesh of pigs and rats and other unclean things, they will meet their end together with the one they follow, declares the Lord. I want to stop right there because that is really... That's putting the fear of the Lord in me. Um, that it's saying those that are consecrated, they purify themselves. They believe that they're doing the right thing. They're following the wrong leader. They're following someone that's eating on clean things and you know having perverse language and um, entertaining doctrines of demons. They're following this leader and they're truly believing that they're following a great leader. But it says they will meet their end together with the one they they follow, declares the Lord. That means that they will be slain by the Lord. That's why it's so important to have wisdom. You can't rely on your mother's prayers, your grandmother's prayers, your spouse to save you, your children to save you. It's you. You need to have the wisdom of the Lord for yourself because you can think you're doing everything right and it be completely not in alignment with the word and what the Lord is saying. So that's why you need to have wisdom for yourself. You need to seek the scripture for yourself. You need to seek him, the Lord, for yourself. That is your responsibility, not anybody else's. And I, because of what they have planned and done, am about to come and to gather people of all nations and tongues, and they will come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them, and I will send them to those who survive, to the nations, to Tarnish and Libyans, to Lydians, famous as archers, to Tobol and Greece and the distant lands that I have not heard of my that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory. And, um, you know, we don't know the, the day or the hour that Jesus is coming back, but he specifically says in his word, when everybody on earth has heard the news of Jesus Christ, he is coming back. So this is part of it, right? That they have not heard or my fame or seen in my glory, sending out the ones that know him. 
they will proclaim my glory among the nations and they will bring all your people from all the nations to the holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to the Lord on horses and chariots and wagons and mules and camels says the Lord they will bring them as the Israelites bring the grain offerings to the temple and the Lord is ceremonially of the Lord and ceremonial clean vessels clean vessels we need to purify 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 ourselves it's not a one-time thing to repent and believe in Jesus it's a daily thing to pick up your cross and repent and ask forgiveness make me clean give me a clean hands and a pure heart I want to be a pure vessel for you and I will select some of them also to be priests and Levites says the Lord as the as as the new heavens and the new earth I will make I make will endure before me declares the Lord so will your name and descendants endure from one new moon to another from one Sabbath to another all mankind will come and bow down before me says the Lord and they will go out and look on the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me the worms that eat them will not die and the fire that burns them will not be quenched and they will be loathsome to all mankind we have a responsibility church It breaks my heart for us to say somebody else will do it. It breaks my heart for someone to pass that doesn't know the Lord and for the church to stand by and say, well, that was their decision. We have a responsibility. If we aren't opening our mouths, how are people hearing the word? And if they, if they don't hear the word, how are they going to know the word? And if they don't know the word, how are they going to respond to the word? Stop saying, my life will show them. Okay, yes. They should know you by their fruit. But if they don't know Jesus Christ then no, it's not enough. You have to profess. You have to, you, like, why, why is a persecuted church in China growing more than the American church is dying? Because they get it. They have the fear of the Lord. They're being persecuted and killed every day in jail. Because they know, they know that this is their loved one's fate. They will look upon their dead bodies. Does not, not put the fear of the Lord in you. You have a responsibility. It's not up to someone else. It's up to us. We are to, we're co-heirs with Christ. He's the one that does the work on their heart. We're the one that brings forth the message. That, you know, the heavenly beings, principalities, all of that, um, demonic spirits and things like that, they have something that, we have something that they don't. We have bodies and we have feet and we have arms and we can go to battle. We are here for such a time as this, in this moment, in this time, in this day, in this age. It is time to suit up. It's time to go out. It's time to push back the gates of hell. We can say, I wish Jesus would come, but do we know how privileged we are? Our voice, our very voice, we can release 
and dispatch angels. We can push back. Um, the devil is the prince of the air, so we can declare out of our mouth that the atmosphere shift in the name of Jesus, that every demonic spirit leave now. If you feel oppressed, every suicidal thought, leave me now in the name of Jesus. You have no authority here. Every demonic spirit plugging my family, get out now in the name of Jesus. You cannot have this. We have our voice, our tongue can bring forth life and death. It's time to use it. Where the church has been muzzled and muted, I'm here to release and break the silence of the church in Jesus' name. Because if people don't hear the word, how are they going to know the word? Right, so this is it, church. But I love the promise. You know, we have the fear of the Lord. It should stir us. It should stir us not to paralyze us, but it should stir us into action, into passion. Because we care. I wouldn't even wish on my, <laughs> on my enemy hell. Hell is horrible. No, I care about the soul. I care about the soul. And, um, but let's look at the promise here. It says, as the new heavens and new earth that I will, in, that I make will endure before me, declares the Lord. So will your name and descendants endure from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another. All mankind will come down and bow before me. That is amazing because what can happen is you releasing that word, you telling that person, you working with God, co-creating, co being a co-heir with Christ, you and your descendants, a thousand generations blessed from what you're doing, from how you're bringing the word of the Lord. That is the hope. That is the hope. So that is... That's amazing. So, um, um, wow. Thank you, Lord. So the house of the Lord is built by wisdom. And that goes back to um, Proverbs 9. It's the, it says the verse 1, Wisdom has built her house. She has set up its seven pillars. Wisdom is the one that builds the house. And so folly also has a house. And it doesn't necessarily um, say this verbatim in scripture. But I'm going to call it a house of idols. Because that's what folly is. House of items, uh, idols. So you can have a house for the Lord to dwell in, built by wisdom. Or you can have a house of idols, built by folly, built by foolishness. And I want to talk about um, building of a house. How do we have this house of house of the Lord built by wisdom? Right, because the Lord gets to dwell inside of us. That is the most amazing thing. And as the body of Christ, we're like this big house that God can dwell in and he can move in. And he deserves the biggest house. He deserves a giant body of Christ to be able to dwell and to work in and to move in and to be in. And I don't know about you, but it gets me super excited to know that the God of creation lives inside of me. That gets me super excited. So how is a house built? So I don't know where you're at with this house of the Lord that's in you. I don't know where you're at. So I'm going to explain the how typically the house is built and we see it in scripture. So the foundation of the house is the most important part. I'm no constructor, but I know that if you don't have a good foundation, that it's not going to work out, right? There's going to be things slipping and, and falling and it's not going to hold up for very long. So the foundation is the most important part. And the amazing thing is that the foundation of our house that we get to build for the Lord inside of ourselves is the love of God. That's the, lo the love of God is our foundation. 
Yeah. And um, from 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it says um, that the greatest of these is love. Love. And I, um, I'm going to speak for myself because I don't know how you all feel, but I have this innate desire to build something that will last. I mean, last. I don't want to just build something with my hands and everything. Like, I want to build something that will last into the heavenly realms that is being exploded up there. And so this is what the Lord was showing me, that we can build him a house here on earth inside of us and that can be the everlasting thing that can be the thing that I devote all of my energy to everything because I can build a physical house with my hands and I can do this and I can do that but as, as we were seeing on the song too that it'll all disappear like snow that is not gonna last like what's here is fading away and it's fading away quickly but I have this desire in my heart to build something for the Lord and to build something that will stand the last of ages that will stand the test of time and that is my house for the Lord that is my relationship with the Lord and giving him a proper place for him to dwell inside of me a holy and pleasing vessel for him and so the foundation is God's love and so that can be a hard one to grasp, honestly. That might take time to build that foundation just based on different traumas and different things that you've been through. Sometimes it's really hard to receive the love of Christ. That's your foundation. So if that's where you're at, spend time in the Word. You, you need to know that there is no shame, there is no guilt, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus, that you are loved, that you were chosen before the foundations of this earth, that His thoughts of you are more numerous than the grains of the sand like he looks on you with such delight and there's nothing that you can do to make him love you more or love you less this isn't a performance award it's just you that's that's all he wants is you so the 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 love of the father is the foundation and then once we have the foundation we have this cornerstone we have this cornerstone which is Jesus Christ and I'm gonna go to Matthew 16 13 through um, 20 and that is whenever Jesus is talking to Peter and okay when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi he asked the disciples who do people say the son of man is they replied some say John the Baptist others say Elijah and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets but what about you he asked who do you say I am Simon Peter answered you are the Messiah the son of the living God Jesus replied blessed are you Simon son of Jonah for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood but by my father in heaven and I tell you that you and I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades or hell will not overthrow it I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Wow. So the cornerstone is Jesus Christ, but it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. When we understand that God in the flesh, like that Jesus was God in the flesh, and that like this living word was literally Jesus Christ, and that his the miracles he performed, the miracles that Jesus performed while he was here, casting out demons and heal this, healing the sick, and everything he's taught that's God's will when we have the revelation that Jesus Christ is the very will and demonstration of God when we have that revelation that is the cornerstone that is what everything can be built on 
so we're not actually building anything yet we got we got God's love as the foundation and the revelation of Jesus Christ that's why when we're when we're sharing Jesus with people and people in our family and people we work with and around us that's why we were releasing the word we're explaining who Jesus is but God's meeting us like his spirit is so we worship in spirit and in truth so we're bringing the truth and God's spirit is right on it and that revelation of Jesus Christ shakes that person wakes that person up and that's when the cornerstone is there and then that's what they can build their life on that's how we build something lasting and then um, as we go to Proverbs 9 back to Proverbs 9 and it says in verse 1 wisdom has built her house she has set up its seven pillars so the pillars I don't know if you're familiar with this but there are seven spirits of the Lord this is all the Holy Spirit this is all God but this is different facets of the Lord so I want you to go to Isaiah 11 verse 1 through 3 and we can look at what the seven pillars what those seven spirits of the Lord is so Isaiah 11 1 says a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse from his roots a branch will bear fruit the spirit of the Lord will rest on him the spirit of wisdom and of understanding the spirit of counsel and of might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord so that is the seven and I'll repeat that again so spirit of the Lord spirit of wisdom spirit of understanding spirit of counsel spirit of might spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord the different facets of God the seven spirits of God of the Lord and those are the pillars that the house and how does it say that in Proverbs 9 it says she has set up its seven pillars so that is the building of this house in the Lord right so we have the foundation of love love God's love the cornerstone the revelation of Jesus Christ and then now we have the pillars that are helping this this house stand and these seven spirits of the Lord are also found in Revelation Relations, and we'll go there a little bit later. Um, but the thing is that um, I'll speak from my experience. I built my house, I built a house of idols, and I built it by folly. And the Lord had to wreck me. He had to completely tear down like a demolition bulldozer like how you see those people tear down houses that's what he had to do in me and it hurt and was painful and I felt agonizing I felt literally like that like that pruning like just like being cut but I had built this lovely house of idols built on um, chasing worldly things and not having really a solid foundation of God's love, not really understanding how much he loved me and how I'm a daughter of God, an heir to the throne, a royal priesthood. I didn't understand that. So he actually had to destroy the entire house house that I created and crack the foundations and let me tell you what has anyone like been there before or know what I'm talking about maybe you're in the process now but it hurts you feel like everything you worked so hard for everything you slaved for all the people you loved all the sun everything feels like it's crashing on you and you have no idea why or where this is coming from and it is the it's the most painful thing and one of the one of the things I've learned is when we don't have wisdom a lot of times we're like why is this happening to me but when we have wisdom we're saying wow this is happening for me 
That's the spirit of knowledge, revelation, understanding can switch your perspective like that. You can be all of a sudden like, why is everything happening to me? Why is this hurting so bad? And then once the Lord shows you something, then you have that revelation, that understanding, your perspective shifts and you're like, I have wisdom. I know what to do now. I know what to do now. I know, I'm going to let him have it. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let him do what he wants, tear it down, break it down. I want my house to be securely fit for the Lord. And so I'm going to go to um, Jeremiah 31, 28. I'm actually going to read the message version. And um, it says here, Jeremiah 31, 28, the message version. Be ready, the time is coming, God, God's decree, when I will plant people and animals in Israel and Judah, just as the farmer plants seeds, and in the same way that I earlier relentlessly pulled up and tore down, took apart and demolished, so now I am sticking with them as they start over, building and planting. So I don't know exactly where you're at in your journey or that so-called house for the Lord. But I felt like the Lord was showing me that there were a lot of people here that are in the tearing down season. That are in the demolition season. And you're hurting and you don't know why everything is happening like this. And it can be a dangerous place to be in because then you can start believing that God's not really for you. And my encouragement to you is to let it go. Let him wreck it. Let him wreck the house you built. Let him crack it to the foundation so the only thing left is the cornerstone. The only thing left is a revelation of Jesus Christ. And he will rebuild it. His promise is that, right here, that he will stick with them, that he will stick with you as you start over building and planting. And you're like, I don't want to start over though. I mean, I come this far in my life. What does that mean starting over? It means that you're going to get to build a house with the Lord that lasts forever. That's what that means. So I'm going to encourage you to let it go. Let it go. Let him tear it down. Let him wreck it. Let him prune you. Let him do what he's got to do because he's doing it for a reason. And he wants to build something new with you. So embrace it. And I'm going to um, read Isaiah 43, verse 18 through 19. It says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Do you not perceive it? He's doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing. So let them tear it down. Stop holding on to comfort. God did not call you to be comfortable. Com content is not comfortable. <laughs> Contentment does not mean comfortability. So let go of your comfortability. Let go of your complacency. Let go. Let him tear it down. There's, there might be something that the Lord has been telling you to do or to let go of that you've had a hard heart against because you know it's going to require you tearing down and you know it's going to require a shaking. But I'm going to encourage you, let him shake it. Let him shake it because what he's about to build is beautiful. He's doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? And if you feel like you're in a place where you haven't been able to clearly hear the Lord, may I suggest that there might be something covering your ears to dwell in the secret place with the Lord get with him because there's probably something he is telling you you just might not be listening so I'm praying that your heart will be softened your ears will open up so you can see and you can know what that thing is so um, I'm going to read from Revelations 4 11 um, yeah, 4, 2 through 11. And I'm going to invite you just to close your eyes because um, we're going to go into the throne room of heaven. 
we're going to go before the Lord. And I want you to envision what it's going to be like to enter the throne room of heaven. And we have that privilege now as saints to come before the Lord in the throne room of heaven. So I'm going to describe to you what the throne room is like, like in Revelations 4 to you. So I just invite you to close your eyes and just imagine what this is like. At once I was in the spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and rumblings the peel, the pills of thunder in front of the throne seven lamps were blazing these are the seven spirits of god also in front of the throne there was what looked like a sea of glass clear as crystal in the center around the throne were four living creatures and they were covered with eyes from in front and in back the first creature was like a lion the second was like an ox the third had a face of a man and the fourth Fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six eyes and was covered with eyes all around, even under their wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So as we are here, this is happening in heaven. This is happening right now in the throne room of heaven. And we will be there one day. We will get to witness this with our own eyes and we will get to see this. None of this world matters. We can't take the stuff with us. We can't take our pride with us. We can't even take our loved ones with us, even if we wanted to. All we can do is stand before the Lord and be in his presence and join in with the angels and say, holy, holy, holy. We are awestruck. Being in that throne room, you won't think of anything else. You will be caught up. These living creatures have so many eyes, they can't even capture all of the Lord's glory. They're covered in eyes and they still can't see it all. And the elders, when they fall at the feet of the Lord, they can't help it. It's like they're compelled to fall down on their knees and cast their crown. And then it happens over and over and over again. The Lord puts the crown back on their head. They fall down and lay it down at his feet. Holy, holy, holy. They pull, put it back on their head, fall down again. Holy, holy, holy. That's where we need to be, church. In that place. All the time. So let them wreck it. Let them wreck that house. Because I want to build something that lasts forever. For the Lord. That's where we need to be. That is the beginning of wisdom. You don't know what to do? Go to the throne room.
And so I do want to open up the altar. And I do want to invite you, if you're able, if you're, to come and to repent before the Lord. Say, Lord, forgive me of my selfish ways. Forgive me of my pride. Forgive me for thinking I was so important when you are the only one that matters. Forgive me for trying to perform, for trying to be the savior of the world. God, forgive me. I need your rest. I need your wisdom. Forgive me for prioritizing comfortability. Forgive me for protecting the house that I built for myself. I don't want it anymore. I don't want that house anymore. It's not going to last. And so whatever that looks like for you, if you, there's a special anointing at the altar. You know, in the Old Testament, that's where they came to sacrifice animals. So it was a very bloody, messy, stinky, smelly place. So it's okay to be messy. It's okay to lose control. We're not here for performance. We're not here for looks. We're here for the Lord. And you can do this at your seat too. However the Lord's leading you. And I want you just to put aside your pride and arrogant ways of thinking, perverse speech, evil ways. And say, God, I hate that. I hate that about myself. I hate that bitterness. I hate that anger. I hate that selfishness. I hate that. I don't want it. I hate what you hate. So God, free me. Release me today. Take it from me today. And I want your peace. I want your rest. I want to stand in awe and wonder of you. And I don't want to be face to face with you. And you to tell me, oh man, there were so many things I had planned for you. There were so many good things I wanted to give you. Why didn't you just put that down? I wanted to give you so much more. Yeah. I want to stand before you and I want to hear you say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You did everything I asked you to do. You didn't leave one stone unturned. So, um, I've never done this before, but there is a song that the Lord has put in my heart, and <laughs> I'm going to sing it, but really it's the Lord's words. And so as I'm singing this song, um, I'm going to invite you to come up to the altar. You can stand, you can kneel, you can sit, you can you can even stand in your seat if you want. It's okay, you don't have to. Um, but it's as an act of obedience, an act of faith, an act of surrender. You can cry, you can laugh, you can be still with the Lord. However He works, no one's here to judge you. And I don't want you to think about your neighbor or who's around you. This is between you and the Lord. Because when we enter this throne room, you're not going <laughs> to care about anyone else. It's just going to be you are caught up in the Lord's glory. So um, I'm going to start singing. If you want to come forward, you can. But Lord God, pour out your power in love. As we sing holy, 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 pour out your power in love. As we sing holy, 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 
Pour out your power in love as we sing holy, holy, holy. We want to see you. We want to see you. Pour out your power in love. Pour out your power in love. Pour out your power in love as we sing holy, holy, holy. We join in with the angels. We join in with the angels and we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God. We exalt your name. We exalt your name. You're the name above all names. You're the Lord above all lords. Oh, forgive us of our selfish ways. Forgive us of our complacency. Forgive us of our comfortability. God, I don't want it anymore. I don't want it anymore. I want a house that's worthy for you. That's built for you. Oh God, use this vessel. Use this vessel. Build me, wreck me, whatever you want to do, God. Your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. I want to know your love. I want to experience your love. I want to know what it feels like. Oh God, pour out your love. Oh healing, healing, healing. Pour it down, pour it down into the depths, into the cracks of my foundation. Oh God, fill me with your love. Fill me with your love. I don't want to hate. I don't want to be bitter. I don't want to be angry. Take this from me. Take this from me. I just want you. I just want you. You're not mad at me. You're not mad at me. You're not a bad father. You're a good, good father. You won't beat me. You won't yell at me. You won't hurt me. You just want to love me. You just want to love me. So I'll let you love me, Daddy Abba. I'll let you love me. I'll let you love me. I'll lay it down at your feet. My worries, my mind. I lay it down. Know my anxious thoughts. Know my anxious heart. Oh God, know my heart. Search my heart. Search my heart and know me. You're the one who created me. Before the foundations of the earth, you saw me. You sought me. You pursued me. I'm sorry for running. I'm sorry for running. I'm sorry for running. Replace my heart. Replace my heart with a heart of flesh. I give you this stony heart. I give you this stony heart. I don't want to hurt anymore. I don't want to hurt anymore. Anyone who's ever left me, anyone who's ever loved me has hurt me. I don't want to hurt anymore. I want to trust you, God. Help me to trust you. Help me to trust you. Healing, healing. Pour out your healing.
I just receive, just receive, pour out. Receive, receive, receive his love. Receive, receive, receive his love. You can open your hands, open your hands, an act of faith. Open your hands. He wants to put something. 